In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. There's one word in the Gospel today that sums up, I think, the whole mission of Jesus Christ. One small word, word that sums up all his work. The evangelist Mark gives us that word in the very language that Jesus spoke, Aramaic, so that we can hear it even more vividly. And that word is ephata. It means be opened. So the context is Jesus is crossing the region known as the Decapolis between the coast of Tyre and Sidon, Galilee. This is an area that was Gentile, not Jewish. And they brought him someone with a disability to be healed, someone who was deaf and also mute. Jesus' fame has spread even among the Gentiles. And Jesus takes this person aside, he takes him away from the crowd, and he touches his ears and his tongue. And then he looks up to heaven and he gives a deep sigh. And he says, Ephrata, be opened. And that man immediately begins to hear and speak. So the historical and the literal meaning of this word, Ephrata, is that thanks to Jesus, a deaf and a mute person was opened. Previously, that person had been closed. They'd been isolated. It was difficult for them to communicate. They couldn't hear what they were saying. Couldn't hear what other people are saying. Now, for him, that person, healing means opening to others and to the world. It's an opening that starts with his ears and his tongue, his hearing and his speech. But this healing involves his whole self and his whole life. At last, he can communicate, he can relate to other people in a new way. And the church has understood the miracle of what Jesus did for that man on that day as a sign. A sign pointing to a greater reality. It points to the reality of what Jesus has come to do for all of us, even if we haven't disabilities like that. We know that a person's closure and isolation doesn't just depend on their sense organs. There's an inner closure too. An inner closure that affects a person's inmost self, what the Bible calls the heart. Separation, division, loneliness characterize our existence after the fall. You know, watching TV on our own, in a single occupancy flat maybe, in Enfield, eating a ready meal for one, is an image of modern life, and also maybe an image of what it is to be fallen. We're reduced to being isolated individuals, individuals, instead of persons. Persons made for communion. Persons who are sustained by a deep communion with God and with other people. And Jesus came to purify our hearts. That's what we were talking about last week. Thinking about last week. And that means he came to open our hearts. He came to liberate us. He came to allow us to live our relationship with God and with other people to the full. And that's why this small word, Ephata, be opened, sums up the whole mission of Jesus Christ. Men and women have been made inwardly mute and deaf by sin. Jesus Christ was made man to allow them to hear God's voice. He was made man so that we can hear the voice of love speaking to our hearts. He was made man so that we can learn to speak the language of love, to communicate with God and with others. And that's why some baptism services include this word, ephata, be opened. The priest touches the mouth and ears of a newly baptized person and says that word, be opened, he says, ephata. The priest prays that the person being baptized may soon hear the word of God and profess their faith. Through baptism, it's as if a person begins to breathe the Holy Spirit, whom Jesus invoked from the Father with a deep sigh in order to heal that person that day, the person who was deaf and mute. And baptism has been called a radical conversion from individualism to personhood. Because someone who's baptized isn't alone anymore. They belong to the church, they belong to the communion of the saints, the living and the dead. As the Book of Common Prayer puts it in the prayer of thanksgiving after the congregation have received Holy Communion. We are very members in corporate in the mystical body of thy son, 
the blessed company of all faithful people. So when we begin to breathe the Holy Spirit, he doesn't just create good individual Christians, individual saints. There's no such thing. We are opened. We're healed of our loneliness. And we participate in an event of communion. And this event of communion is, of course, the very life of God on earth. Because God is communion. The communion of the divine persons in whose image we are made. That image is diminished when we just become individuals. We're made in the image of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, to whom be all glory and praise, now and forever. Amen. <laughs>